We've been going through a few changes on my side anyway this year. Uh, could easily just put in what we had in the bike last year, but I didn't win any races or I didn't win many races last year. So what we used last year wasn't good enough. We need to we need to find more. Last year we didn't really have any days uh, to test the bike and make changes. It was always race weekends. So often we'd sort of like get a little bit adventurous and sort of start moving in a direction and then the next session will be a qualifying session or even a race so we're like oh it's too dangerous it's too risky let's just go back with what we know let's go to our comfort zone and you end up not really changing much on the bike and never really going far away from what we know works and um, really not developing any further than the, than the position we're in so fortunately the start of this year has been quite good in the fact we've had a lot of days on track and um, I've sort of, uh, we've started off in a little bit different uh, path, a bit direct, a little bit different direction with the bike and it didn't immediately um, prove to be amazingly better, but I think it's one of those situations where you just got to persevere and it's not going to be immediately better straight away, but if you, um, you know, find where the weaknesses are of the bike and then try and focus on what we can do to improve that area. And then even if the bike isn't good straight away, as long as that area improves, then we can fix other problems in other ways later on. So that's the sort of uh, method of thinking that we're, that we're using. Sorry to interrupt your um, lunch. Are you going to join us today, Pete? Or do I? I was thinking that if I sit here, I might, I might listen and take you all in. All right, good. <laughs> normally, we've got a lot to talk about because uh, we don't normally do a chat show on a Friday. Uh, it's normally Saturday, so we've had a Friday practice, and there's a fair bit happening, and then we've had a few sessions, and you know we're working out our ranking amongst all the other competitors, and there's a fair bit to chat about. But at the moment, um, we've had one session, and. Um, so I'll just, uh, I'll just give you a brief rundown of how it sort of went. The bike, um, it didn't work too bad at, at Alton Park. Uh, you know, we were, we, we were progressing and actually had quite a decent sort of finish at the end of the weekend. Um, well, you did. Yeah, I did. Well, I mean, I, I, I can't, I'm not speaking for, for Pete. He, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's in a, a, got a different um, method of, uh, of riding at the moment, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, one that's upside down apparently. I'm not riding too much, but um, I'll let him explain that shortly. But um, so what we've done is we've come to, to Donington here, and um, we've started with more or less. It's not exactly the same bike because it's a different track. Obviously, the gearing's a little different, so you're, you're forced to make the changes that are necessary for the bike at Donington Park. But in general, um, we've got the bike in more of the the settings of suspension and chassis position that I was happy with at Alton Park. So I've gone out in the first session and, and, and in the first five or 10 minutes or so, I was um, P4. So it's definitely not a bad bike. Um, we've just got to, got to work and refine it a little further here this weekend. Um, by the end of the session, I think I dropped to maybe eighth position. So that's not a disaster or anything like that, but um, uh, there's definitely some work uh, still to be done and the area that's uh, that I'm focusing on the most at the moment or working with the guys on is just engine braking chassis wise um, General handling of the bike feels pretty good, you know uh, change of direction down through crane of curves and you know uh, Grip and, and stability of the bike all feels very much I think in line with with what I can see the other competitors around so the track felt quite slippery on the first um, outing today because the track was recently resurfaced. I think it started last year, it was resurfaced. So um, the grip level of Donington been quite good the last few visits. So when we first rolled out, that the wheel spin straight away it was almost a bit like, oh, we're, we're not used to this. It's normally been really good grip here. So the grip level was a bit low, so that was a concern. But then I watched everyone else around me that was on track doing the same thing. So I'm thinking, well, that seems to be a track-related issue, not just my bike's got something wrong. It's not got oil going on the tire or anything weird. It's just we just the track's not generating a huge amount of grip. So um, so I kind of ignored that issue for the moment, and then just went, well, chassis general feeling's quite good, but. Um, 
Every time I was on the brakes, I was really struggling to get the bike to stop. Practice two, we, we improved and we made further progress progress with the bike and my lap times, but you know I dropped further down in, in the list and then um, and then we sort of uh, struggled a little bit to find some progress. Uh, you know everyone else was starting to gather momentum and, and, and improve their lap times, and then we went into qualifying and um, I I had we had actually slightly improved the bike a little bit for qualifying, but I didn't put a very good lap together because it's a super pole that they have here, just one lap, so. Um, I made a, a bit of a mistake into um, coppice, which is the, the right hander that leads onto the back straight. And, uh, and then as a result of that, I uh, got on the gas too hard trying to recover from that mistake. I, I kind of just clipped the inside curb a little and then ran, ran a little wide, losing some momentum. Gave it plenty of throttle and got a big spin coming out onto the back straight. Well, obviously spinning off the turn reduces your top speed in the straight. Um, but if that wasn't bad enough, I only went back to second gear at Melbourne Loop, which is that you know tight right hand um, hairpin. And uh, normally I go back to first, and just you know throughout the pressure of making mistakes and trying to do something really really good on one lap, I sort of just messed it up. And I come out in second, and the engine was like labouring and it's not really accelerating hard. So it meant I got a bad qualifying position. So, um, yeah, I went into the, the first race and tried to make some progress. Obviously, um, you know, starting where I did wasn't ideal, but uh, if you've got the, a good package, you can obviously um, move forward and work forward. So, I passed a couple of people, but uh, I finished eighth, I think. So, not end of the world sort of bad, but sort of not not fantastic. Nothing we can really uh, you know be pleased with. So then um, we uh, made some changes overnight. Went out in morning warm up, and I was um, second fastest in morning warm up for most of the session. Ended up fourth at the at the closing uh, moments of, of morning warm up. So that was a real good uh, sort of boost of confidence that we'd made a good step with the bike. We'd made a small adjustment, and it felt better. The lap time was better and I was obviously further up the, the list of the riders.
I was quite confident going out in the, the race we just finished earlier, but um, unfortunately just got a really bad start. Uh, didn't get a very good launch, like initially off the line, and then, you know, if that wasn't bad enough, or just because of my position, I was out wide at turn one, and then there was a whole load of people bashing bars on the inside, and the whole group kind of come out wide, and um, I ended up losing a whole bunch of places. So on lap one, I was 18th, and then, um, yeah, I worked my way, worked forward. Uh, you know, a few people dropped out, which gifted me a few positions, but um, my lap times actually weren't too bad. Um, we were fairly uh, consistent with the lap times, didn't really drop uh, during the sprint race. So hoping that uh, I can maintain the, the later part of the race quite strong this afternoon, because it's a 20 lap race, so it's a little bit longer. So maybe if my pace at the end is, is uh, showing signs of being strong, then you know, I can make up a few extra places um, I normally share this opportunity with Pete, but he's not here yet, so I'll, uh, I'll just do it solo for the moment. He might turn up, he might not. Um, welcome to the FHO BMW Hospitality. Um, I normally drop a VIP in there, but you already know you're important, so I don't need to address you with that. Uh, for me, we, we had a test here at this circuit uh, earlier this year already, and um, we kind of uh, took that those settings and that information we gathered, screwed it up in the ball and threw it in the bin. It wasn't really uh, super valuable. It was good for me because I did, you know, it's early in the year. We got, you know, extra laps and, um, you know, got me accustomed to the bike. But the settings we tried at that test didn't really uh, materialize to be any, uh, any value. So um, after we went to the opening round in Navarra, we kind of went a different way with settings. And then we went to Alton Park and... and persevered and progressed further in that direction. So now that we've come back to Donington, um, it, it's, uh, it seems very obvious not to worry about what we had tried here earlier and we just carry on in the path that we're on. So um, um, from yesterday to today was the, the throttle mapping. So although we don't have launch control, traction control, anti wheelie and stuff like that, that uh, a lot of the rider aids that are available in like World Superbikes and so on, um, they aren't available in, in British Superbike uh, as part of the rules, but, um, but we can alter um, the throttle mapping. So as I open the throttle, if the, if the engine feels too aggressive, um, the data guys can look at the, at the, uh, the delivery of the power and, and alter it a little. So even though I might give it, say, let's say make it up, I'll say 85% throttle, uh, my hand might be at 85, but the engine might only be receiving 72 or 75 or 78 you know what i mean it, it could vary so as to try and um you know give the bike a, a smooth feeling and um you know even there are small moments when actually they they go past um the rider's hand to fill let's say like a a torque uh, a, a bit of a dip in the torque curve they'll actually the butterflies and the engine will, will open up past the percentage that i'm actually after to try and give the bike a, a perfect smooth linear feeling so from yesterday to today, we actually raised the, the power feeling a little bit to try and give it some more go. Um, but as a result, the first gear became a little bit more aggressive to, to use. So as I was uh, feeding the clutch in and, and opening the throttle, I had the, the front wheel trying to like baby, basically bunny hop because I was trying to control the, the extra power in first I wasn't really used to. So the first start that I'd done on the altered um, throttle mapping was in the race. So Hopefully now I know that the you know that the RPM doesn't need to be as high as it was before, and I might be able to you know adjust my um, method of starting to, to get a better start in this next one. But I do normally, as as Pete says, I do normally go quite good at starts. It's not like normally a weak area that I suffer in, but um, but today I just uh, yeah stuffed it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, what I'm hoping for is from the lap time that we just did in the race finish 
that means I start on the second row for this next race. So obviously being right up the front makes a huge difference. If I can get a good start and stay out of trouble in the first turn, and stay with the lead group, I think my lap time's are good enough to stay there. And then um, at the end of the race, like I said, if my pace is still strong, I should be able to fight for some good positions. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling confident and positive or trying to trying to remain, um, you know, with a positive mindset before we go out. And, uh, yeah, I think um, just from what I could see, like, lap time-wise from that race we just had, we've got every reason to believe that if we get a good start, we should be able to run fairly strong pace at the front. So On the grid, obviously, down a little bit of speed into the FHL PMW. We've heard that uh, you've had one of some issues this weekend. Hopefully, things are going in the right direction now. Uh, it's not really issues. It's just uh, it's just me and the, and the package at the moment doesn't isn't isn't competitive enough. So uh, we've got to work harder than normal. And you know, just at the end of a weekend, when you think you're getting somewhere near, you go to a new track the following week, and uh, you've got to start all over again. So as if the the bike knows that it's at a new track and, and is rebelling. But um, yeah, we we definitely found some improvements uh, in mo for morning warm up this morning, and definitely improved the lap time. Uh, the race earlier today was damaged by uh, a poor start and a bad position in turn one. So I genuinely think if I can get away, uh, you know, with the top five, six, I've, I've got the pace to sort of stay in that position. Um, I haven't got the speed to, you know, charge towards the front and, and lead, but uh, definitely stay in the, in the top sort of five or six position is definitely achievable. But um, I just got to get through the, the first couple of laps and, and find some good track position and stay out of trouble. You know your way around here, Brooksy. Good luck. Come and interfere, do you know what I mean? No, I'm not, but I'm not sensitive, you should know that. <laughs> yeah, a bit, a bit bummed up after the final race. Uh, the lap time from race two meant I started on the second row for race three, and I got an okay start and, you know, had to fight for positions for a few laps, and, uh, Everything felt pretty good, like we were doing well. And then um, I had some brake problems where the lever was coming in closer and closer to my hand. So um, I have a span adjuster, but I didn't actually get a chance to adjust it before I'd already crashed. So um, I went into the, the final turn of the lap and uh, I was holding on to the brake, but it wasn't stopping me enough. So I ended up far too deep in the corner with too much brake still on and uh, lost the front. So. Yeah, obviously I feel bad for everybody involved. We were, you know, hoping for a good finish to the day uh, to try and build spirits, but uh, I fell off trying. So all I can say is we will come back and uh, and try harder and uh, keep pushing on as we go forward.